today's the day we're going to peg the camels. The nose peg, the guru, he turns up everywhere. Come all the way to Western Australia to Shark Bay. And here he is. Now he's got his kit here. Medicine's the spike. You can see the big spike in his hand over there. That's the best method to use with the camel. So one, two, three, four, and even little Miss Black today to be done. Nose pegging. Guru. So this is the method we're using. We just bring his head into the pole that gets control. Okay, he's not gonna swing around and bite and all that. Now it seems like a hard operation this, but there's a lot of ways to do it. Some people will cut him with knives, some people will use leather punches to clip him. But Neil over here is saying without taking the skin away. So the spike just stretches it, a bit, little bit like when you get an earring. Just stretches it like that and it'll heal back to the peg really quickly. And roughly about seven days, should be able to, be able to use them again. Hey? First time. You're right, big boss. Little Miss Black, let's have a look. Hmm? You love me, don't you? Hey? See, and there's a peg there. Nice and neat little job. It's all right. Hey? Not as bad as it seems, is it? Hey? You're all cool, aren't you? They'll get over it real quick. In fact, we can start working them, get them all in saddle, move them, and like I said, clean this every day, twice a day. Poor, poor, twist the peg. And then by about the seventh day, we can start teaching them nose lines. Hey, make for a little riding camel now, won't you? You're a little cheeky. Give me a kiss. And to say, job's That's done. That's the kit. Job's done. That's his spike, the extender tool. Good clean water. Yeah, you can have that too. Feels like a bit of warm water in there with a the rag. And we'll keep the poor poor and the rag. That's the gift for the day, too. a bit of a yeah, rag. I'll, I'll shout your second rag too. We've got a second rag. There. Perfect. One for each hand, one for each nostril. Every Radio. two camels. Perfect. Nearly Guru Waters strikes again. Done. And we'll see him somewhere down the track. He'll appear out from under another bush. <laughs> now this bloke here, he's had the least amount of work done to him at the moment, okay? Because he's a big bull. Let him settle a little bit. No, no, I'll be fella. Now the interesting one about this is we've just walked him over and tied him up to the same pole that we've nose pegged him on. Okay, now they're a very smart animal. He hasn't shown any fret at all over that. The eating and the fact that from a wild camel after what we've just done, he's all right big fella. Little connection. Even to be able to let me go near his head, it's amazing. Like you're not going to really get away with that with many other animals on this planet. Okay. So a very tough animal, they've accepted the nose peg. A little bit of a protest there, got it in, the job's done. Now every time we go near it from here, it's going to be easier. Rightio. Like I said before, if they're knocked out, or it's anaesthetic, or they use another one, there's a thing called romping you can use to calm the camel down like this. When you go to use the peg, they don't really know what it is. So the fact that we've done that with the spike, while they're looking at us, they've got a lot of respect for us now. And it works, it makes it easier every time you use it after that. So, it's the reason we use that method. As you see, they're all leading, they've all forgiven me. It's only been about an hour since they've been pegged, and you can see they're quite calm about it. Anyway, that's nose pegging a camel. Pretty forgiving animal. You can see the peg there in the side of his head. Righty ho, that's big red. Red's yes to have a saddle on his back. Only done a few days work himself just by teaching him to lead up. Got his peg in. Quite calm about it. Once again, it's only been an hour. Hey, he's alright. He just wants to eat his hay. 
Okay, it took about three days to eat hay, so I reckon the minute they start touching hay, the minute you can lead them up, domesticated. Big red. Then Mr. Gray. Mr. Gray's been the cool one. He got his saddle on yesterday. He's had two days worth of saddling and he's doing quite well. Okay, he's a really cool animal. And the one I love about Mr. Gray is he's forming nicely behind Big Munji. Big Munji's not stressed out about him being behind him, walking in single file. So that's a good way how I pick my own camels if I want to put a team together. If I've got two bulls together and they're both <laughs> revving up and things like that, that can cause you a bit of danger out on the road. So the plan is from here, right, we're going to get them all going in saddles. We're going to walk. Okay, whether we walk all the way to Broome, we might as well leave from here on foot. Best way to train your camels, you can put them on trucks, put them on trailers, get them all there, stirs them up a little bit. Best way to do it, get them going. Okay, most of the time in the past, I've caught wild camels, I've hooked them on, gone for a walk, and I've found very quickly they learn to be very quiet camels. Form into line, it's the best way to do the training. Now in the old days, you're expected to do it. These days, if you tell someone I'm gonna get wild camels and I'm gonna walk off, and you know, the distance to Broome could be up around 1,700 kilometers, people think you're mad. But this is camels, and this is what camel drivers have to do to get the best camels in Australia. You catch them, you break them, you walk. Okay? I know someone that'd love to go for a walk, wouldn't you? Yeah, old big fella. Pretty forgiving, Mr. Gray. Mr. Mungie, hey, had his nose pick done. He's forgiven, aren't you, big fella? Hey, you're a good man, aren't you? Hey. It's going to be great. Now, Mungie's going to be my lead camel. Okay, so now that we've got the pegs in, we can put a nose line on him, we can use the reins. Okay, when it gets to the stage where we're going to be riding him. When we first leave with a string of camels, okay, it's probably not worth being sitting on the back of your big bull. Get that fly out of the lens sitting on the back of your big bull riding because everything happens you've got to get down off your camel so we'll be walking in the start and now that's there we've got the ability to teach him to ride now and that's the future of big munji okay hey, you're a big special camel aren't you hey, you're a big man hey, such a cruiser you're right aren't you big boy mr munji i'm gonna stuck my finger you hanging for a food. All right, little Miss Black. Hello, big girl. Hello, big girl. Give me a kiss. Now that's pretty cool. Like I said, it's been an hour. She's only a little young camel, this one. She's already taken that quite well. Got your brand new little nose pig, haven't you? We'll be down tomorrow to clean it up. A little pat there on the nose. See? She's a real princess. Now, as I said, it's been an hour since we pegged him pretty much got over it. Their only interest now, getting back to her dinner, aren't you? Getting back to your dinner, little miss, aren't you? Hey? Why are you going to eat my hat? Hey? She's such a princess. Well, this trip's going to be interesting. We've got four bull camels and one cow. Okay, three bull camels are wild. Little Miss Black, she's only been taking a little harness saddle for a few days. And Munji, well, you could consider him Pretty well broken in, but even though he's only really half broken. So it's going to be an interesting trip. Now you probably wouldn't have seen this for a lot of time, but four bull camels and one cow heading up the coast. We've got our hands full. But I like bulls, they're sturdy, they're pretty good. As long as you understand the animal, you can work bulls really well. If you don't, be really careful of them. Especially when you have a gorgeous little black one around like you. You're going to stir all the boys up, aren't you? Go and have dinner. Go and have dinner. Miss Black.